A while back, I talked about Heavy Gear, the Canadian knockoff, I mean inspired, Battletech mech sim franchise, whose first game in 1997, developed and published by Activision, was met with a lukewarm reception, remaining a decent, if unimpressive, title. Years before that video, I talked about 1999's Heavy Gear 2, or tried to, as its crummy stability made it nigh impossible for almost anyone to discuss it, let alone enjoy. Potentially a long-term result of development troubles and a small team with very ambitious new technology. Fast forward and finally some absolute chads got Heavy Gear 1 and 2 fully up and running on modern OS's, conveniently packaged on a single Google Drive folder, making playing and enjoying both titles a straightforward process. This is a result of various community members coming together and sorting the mess out. The included installation guide, patches, mods, and add-on files compiles a heap of additional post-release and fan-made content that, in almost every other case, will be vaporware. It's another excellent showcase of how dedicated and crucial fans are for video game preservation. Now then, is Heavy Gear 2 actually worth playing? After completing the campaign, messing around with the custom levels and instant action modes, you'll realize you're not just playing a mech sim, but also a pretty in-depth tactical action shooter with light stealth elements. Ideas that shouldn't mesh, especially in 1999. Yet it mostly does. Heavy Gear 2 offers some really novel gameplay that I've never seen replicated since. In terms of content, Heavy Gear 2 offers a 21 mission campaign, an instant action mode, and a bunch of historical scenarios. I sorta of covered Heavy Gear's Terra Nova setting in the first video, and fortunately the story here doesn't require much background knowledge. The setup is that a city is bombed by the Earth Government, the NEC, forcing the Northerner and Southerner factions to form a strike force and investigate a possible renewed invasion from Earth. The first quarter of the game is set on Terra Nova, a few missions where you beat up militants and Earth forces before you hop away to Caprice, an NEC occupied planet. For the rest of the game, you'll link up with resistance forces and sabotage the NEC's military, then head home. I just summarized and spoiled Heavy Gear 2's entire plot for its 10 to 12 hour campaign in 24 seconds. Barely anything happens of note, nor does it make much sense. Why did the NEC bomb the city in the first place, revealing their presence? Who fucking knows? The prior game had a story of multiple characters going through their own arcs and a couple interesting moral themes all relayed through terrible FMVs, of course. Nothing of the sort is offered here. You play as a nameless, voiceless commander, and nearly everything is relayed by your intel officer, Morgan. There's no betrayals or revelations. Uh, except for one. The NEC have built their own gears. Uh, okay. It's disappointingly bare bones for a fairly interesting setting. Your squad offers the best characterization, as each member has interesting background histories, attitudes, and good voice acting. They all come across as mentally unhinged in their dialogue though, which makes sense as you're basically on a suicide mission with nothing to lose. They can get injured and die on missions, so you want to watch out for them as there's unique banter between teammates depending on who you deployed with, adding an extra bit of replay value. It's worth noting that I had difficulties getting the cutscenes and briefing cinematics to play as a defunct video codec has to be enabled or installed. This can be done via running the command prompt as an administrator and enabling the Indio 5 codec. Heavy Gear 2 plays closely to the first game and generally other mech games with a few major adjustments. In the simplest sense, it's a very clunky FPS with a billion extra inputs. There's a decent tutorial that explains each control system and mechanic, and you don't have to deal with... them. You'll refer back to these guides often, as control pileup is a big fucking issue, as frustratingly, there's no in-game key menu. So if you forget how to target an object or pick up an item, tough shit. There's like 4 buttons that manage targeting, 2 for sensors, and turning and strafing are separate keys. So it never feels particularly graceful unless you're a pro or have a joystick. In one of the downloads, the key bindings have already been remapped to a modern setup. I highly recommend it. Word to the wise, skipping cutscenes is Control X. Yeah, don't rewatch them a dozen times like me. Oddly, for a franchise that emphasized how you could switch between walker and wheel modes for greater mobility options, Aside from a couple campaign sections and custom maps, you barely use it. It's safer to take things at a slower pace. An expansion to Heavy Gear 2 are the tactics available for your squadmates. Instead of just the basic follow, wait, and attack commands, you can enter a real-time top-down view where you can issue waypoints, create formations, move squad elements around, target enemies, and change combat modes. On larger maps, it works shockingly well. Units are responsive enough to delegate orders to without getting themselves killed or stuck, as long as you construct a path for them, otherwise they'll trip up on hills and buildings. At its best, I was able to complete several skirmishes while sitting back and having them follow my commands, or back me up when I was injured or leading an assault. 
but you'll rarely use these tactics in the campaign, as combat is too fast paced, levels too short, and sometimes teammates ignore your commands and run off to engage enemies, which is very frustrating. A pause and play mode in the top down view would have helped a lot. Another new mechanical inclusion is the emphasis on stealth. Yes, stealth mechanics in a mech game. In the bottom corner of the HUD is a stealth bar that illustrates your gear's profile and the threshold before enemies become aware of your presence. This adjusts by changing stances, radar options, and if you deploy ECM, which shatters you from detection. Exceptionally useful when needing to pass through guarded areas. Yet again, this works shockingly well. You'll duck to cover when avoiding patrols and lay in wait before springing an ambush. No idea how a fucking mech game managed to figure out a decent stealth system unlike a majority of dedicated genre titles. Unfortunately, like the tactical components, it's another heavily underused feature. Rarely you're required to maintain stealth in most levels, and I was never sure if my squad mates were alerting the enemies or not as they ran around in circles. In the setup before every deployment, you select your gear, its equipment, and supporting squad mates. The gear you select isn't structurally customizable. You can no longer swap heads or legs. There's not even a limb damage model system. Hit points are just a generic set pool. Rather, weight restrictions have been removed and instead you have hard points and equipment slots where you cram anything into, regardless of gear variant. The various gear models have speed and armor differences, yet can handle any sort of weapons loadout. You can easily create a heavily armed, lightly armored, and fast gear type. In addition, there's perks you can add on, extra armor, sensors, electronic countermeasures, fire control, and jump jets. Most of these can be increased in output and efficiency. I don't know if it's because of the version I'm playing on, as there's no unlock progression. I had immediate access to all the weapons and equipment from the start. I think this is okay, as weapons are much more balanced. Aiming and targeting is easy enough, and there's a huge selection of them that work meaningfully different. Projectile weapons are slow, while energy ones are hit scan, yet the former allows far greater ammo capacity and rate of fire, and it's quite easy to run low in energy types and become defenseless. This makes having a variety of light and heavy weapons actually quite handy, as they can work as backup firearms against weaker targets. Annoyingly, missiles are far less useful due to the lack of a separate fire key for them. You'll need to constantly alternate between your weapon selection to use them, a real detriment during battle. To prevent you from maxing out every feature and ability, there's a threat level that must be kept under. Interestingly, you can reduce your threat greatly by adding on flaws which handicaps your gear in really fucking irritating ways. Weak points, 40 equipment, and combusting ammo, leading to a huge range of different builds and setups that you have to really consider. I haven't seen anything like this in a sim game, although you can mostly ignore it as beating the game requires just high armor. There's also a couple quirks here, such as adding on hundreds of rockets or grenades, adding barely any threat. For whatever reason, the campaign locks you into the gear you select when starting, meaning you can handicap yourself if you pick the weakest model. It also made playing the game unpatched very difficult, as trying to customize your gear would crash the game. Nice. After considering how there's no power supply constraints, the old weight and damage model systems being effectively removed, your gear feels less like a mech and more like power armor. It's strangely similar to Looking Glass's Terra Nova. You can even equip a saber or a battle axe and just fucking charge the enemies. Nevertheless, I think it's fine as the gameplay comes together well enough with decent mission, location, and enemy variety. Skimming over the irrelevant story, the briefings before each mission are outlined well. Objectives cover the classic roster of attacking enemy positions, escorting allies, and environmental exploration. They're typically simpler and shorter than other sim titles, lasting maybe 5 minutes each in pretty closed off maps. Still, there's a few surprises thrown your way, and when the stealth and squad mechanics are implemented, like performing reconnaissance on an enemy base, or tasking allies to strike separate objectives, the encounters really stand out. Part of the challenge is lost, as you can whip out the tactical view and scan the map, finding where all the enemy installations are. There's a solid roster of enemies here. Besides fighting other gears, you'll encounter infantry, light and heavy armor, turrets and drones, resorting in plenty of combined arms action. Firefights rarely feel repetitive or exhausting due to competent AI for both enemies and allies, and when the levels allow it, a good mix of close and long range engagements. How enemies explode or gib lends that visceralness and feedback absent in many sims. The environments within the campaign are paced strangely. The first handful of missions are set on Terra Nova, each offering a unique biome to fight in. Then once you head to Caprice, it's just generic barren Martian and industrial zones, which makes most of these levels forgettable. I believe this is a result of how detailed the levels are. The graphical presentation here is a massive step up from two years ago. Destructible buildings, awesome particle effects, the modeling on the gears, the quality of the weather effects and rocket and mortified designed over two decades ago is still incredible. 
On the other hand, the environmental compromise and Martian-like backdrop could stem from Activision's hybrid strategy game Battlezone coming out a year prior and potentially influencing the project. Alright, I've been talking about Heavy Gear 2's design and gameplay thus far without mentioning the most interesting thing about the game. For some mad as fuck, ineffable reason, the devs implemented Zero-G Space Mech Combat. No, this can't be right. Not for 1999. Oh, but they did it, because no one fucking stopped them. In these handful of levels, you have to scale massive space stations with your squad and fight off any number of defenses as you grapple with Newtonian physics where any jump or boost will propel you to deep space. I was saving this up as it alone makes Heavy Gear 2 worth playing right now, albeit these stages are frustrating, paced badly, and are a control nightmare. Moving yourself in space is understandably complicated as you need to constantly slow down, pivot, and reorientate yourself as otherwise you'll lose control. The AI adapts well here, zipping around, sniping from a distance, and with such a minimal cover you'll die a lot here. Despite the clearly huge amount of work done on these mechanics, only three proper Zero-G missions made it into the game, separated so far apart that it forces you to repeat the space gameplay tutorial to remember what the fuck the key bindings are. Now, I can't confirm this, alright? But supposedly, this was all to demo the concept of a Jovian Chronicles game, another tabletop title published by the owners of Heavy Gear, DreamPod 9. It never saw the light of day. <clears throat> what the fuck? Why would you spend so much dev time creating mechanics for a future space mech Why game and they're not fucking make it? Why the fuck do I have to suffer? suffer. <clears throat> After all of this, you'd think that Heavy Gear 2's campaign would be summarized as short and bittersweet, except for the difficulty curve being non-existent. Half the missions can be completed in three minutes, other times an hour of repeating the same bullshit encounters. Apparently, this was a constant issue during the development coming about from the aggressive AI, and I assume the implementation of critical hits changing the damage values. Of course, they didn't add difficulty options, but they did include alternate HUD colors. Thanks. Unless you slap on a ton of armor, basic enemy attacks will rip through and knock you over before exploding. With such a control pileup, awkward switching between weapons, and hit scanning opponents, this will happen often. One mission has you move through a giant, poorly textured city alone. If you know what you're doing, it's 20 minutes. If not, well, it sucks. The solution is to scum the game out hard, slap on the heavy guided mortar, turn on active radar, and now kill everything in the area without ever having to move. Congratulations, you've beaten Heavy Gear 2. The exceptions now are some objectives being vague. In one of the space missions, enemies will endlessly respawn until you complete an existing task. It's an entirely bullshit way to push you down a linear playstyle. After you finish the campaign, there's a bunch of aforementioned historical and instant action missions that replace the dueling bonus campaigns from the original, alongside fan-made levels from the downloadable repacks. If you want more gameplay and map variety for mech on mech action, these are nice. I didn't finish many of them, not because of their challenging nature, but when you fail, you have to build up your squad and customize your gear again. From their scale and plethora of buildings and unique environments, I have the feeling that these may have been part of the campaign originally. A longer prologue on Terra Nova before everyone joined up against the NEC would have helped the game's pacing far better. I get the impression that my frequent complaints and reviews makes it seem like the game in question is bad. While the first Heavy Gear was fairly derivative of MechWarrior, the sequel here is like a really good proof of concept that was just never expanded upon in the third game, leaving behind many unrefined ideas. I'll make it clear now that Heavy Gear 2 is a bizarrely ambitious, competently crafted title with enough standout impressive features that makes it one of the best mech games of the era. The third game would supposedly expand on these ideas mixing on foot and gear sections. Wait, wait a fucking second, why don't we get that fucking game? I know there's an unfinished Heavy Gear Assault game, but who actually gives a fuck? Once more, I have to credit the folks that put this all together and managed to get it to run so well after years of instability nightmares. I want you to play this game. It doesn't deserve the abandonware status or copyright limbo. As usual, go wishlist it and pester the usual republishers. Though considering the current status of the older MechWarrior games, I'm not optimistic. I can only thoroughly recommend you play it now and thank those that made it possible once again. <laughs>